Okay, so let's keep on going. A little bit more to go. So this effect of water uh, we talked about for it to um, uh, absorb a lot of heat and help carry heat with it. Uh, it helps a lot in the environment. And what do I mean by that? Well, water has this ability to stabilize temperatures. So what do I mean by that? Well, it takes a lot of time for water to heat up. Matter of fact, um, the definition of, uh, of how we measure heat is based off of water, um, something called uh, a, a joule. It's the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. That is, the, that is, that is a joule. So many joules make up a calorie, and calories are what we measure energy in whenever we eat. So when you eat so many calories, you're actually measuring that based off of uh, based off of water. Water's the uh, how long it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. So um, water takes a long time to warm up, and it also takes a long time to cool down. It take, it just doesn't like to change heat that much. It's going to be great for us for homeostasis, but also helps for the environment. So what's going on there? So imagine you have two cities, Denver and Los Angeles. So Los Angeles is really, really close to the uh, a large body of water, and Denver is not. So what happens is during the daytime, the uh, temperature of Los Angeles um, goes up a little bit. Yeah, it gets warmer during the day, but it's got a it's got a large body of water, the Pacific Ocean, to absorb a lot of the energy from the sun. So the temperature goes up, but not that much, res respectively. During the nighttime, it should get a lot colder because there's no more sun out, but you've got this large body of water next to it releasing energy, um, heat into the air, and it helps keep the city a little warmer at night. So it helps moderate the temperature. You don't get these huge spikes during the daytime, and you don't get the huge drop-offs at night. Now Denver, while it is a mile up, it's a, it's a pretty high city, um, it, uh, it, it, it's a little bit different. There's not a large body of water next to it. So what happens is that during the daytime, the uh, temperature does rise pretty steeply. It gets, gets kind of warm. And during the nighttime, it drops off and gets pretty cold. There's nothing around to help moderate the temperature. A good way of showing this is during in, in a desert. At night, uh, during the daytime, it can be 120 degrees. That's pretty daggum hot, right? But when the nighttime comes, the temperature can drop down to 68. That's actually fairly cold. Um, why is it such huge temperature differences? Well, there's no water to moderate the temperature. Deserts are defined not by their temperature, but by the amount of rainfall. You can have a freezing cold desert all the time. You can have a windy desert, but it just has to have little, very little rainfall to be classified as a desert. So I mentioned earlier, um, internally, this property of water helps with our homeostasis. Whenever we start uh, warming up, it takes a while for that to happen, and that helps keep us from getting too warm. Um, uh, when we also start going out into like a colder area, it takes a while for us to cool off. And that helps us from getting too cold too quickly. So that helps us maintain that range of internal conditions. Okay, so um, there's a, uh, a YouTube video um, that is linked for you. If you go into the notes uh, and click on um, uh, the YouTube link that's there, it's actually the page looks just like this. Uh, you can click control click. If not, just go to YouTube and, and, and do a search for TED, T-E-D, Ed, E-D, um, why does ice float? And it goes over the information about why does ice float. Actually, it's actually already linked for you. It should be in the uh, module with all the videos under uh, water. And it, it explains why ice floats. It talks about hydrogen bonds. It has a great little diagram for you, uh, a great little video rather for you to watch. Okay, so let's move into acids and bases. So pretty simple. So when we talk about that, we talk about the pH scale. So acids and bases are defined on their ability either to give up or take in hydrogen ions. And a pH scale measures that. So it's just measuring the number of higher hydrogen ions that are in water. And the reason why we use uh, talk about acids and bases with water is because most acid-base chemistry takes place in water. Um, and so the scale ranges from 0 to 14. Uh, acids often neutralize bases and vice versa. So here's an example of um, a pH scale. Acids are on the low end. Bases are on the high end. Neutral's right in the middle. Most things that we eat are, are, are vegetables and fruit and organic matter is usually uh, pretty acidic. Um, things that are like cleaning agents, though, are bases. We don't eat these, so, you know, that's a good way of, that's, that's basic. Don't eat that. Um, pure water is 7 and considered neutral. Now, that's pure water. Water is a universal solvent. Whenever you drink water at somebody's house and it tastes different, that's because it's got different things dissolved in it. Well water has a bunch of different stuff dissolved in it. So when you buy that pure water from the shop and uh, from the grocery store, like Walmart, and get those bottled waters, um, that's distilled water. That's just hydrogen and oxygen. 
We also use that in science a lot, so it's really good to, to have because you don't want to do a chemistry experiment and have a whole bunch of other stuff in your water that you're not supposed to have. Um, but there's a thing called litmus paper that we use to determine if something's an acid or base rather than sticking our finger in it. Um, litmus paper will turn red in the presence of an acid and blue in the presence of a base. Easy way to remember it is blue base. Um, when I think of acids, I think of uh, like uh, aliens, the movie Aliens, when they cut the uh, aliens open and the blood is extremely acidic. I just remember blood is red. Um, in the movie, the blood is green, but still blood is red, so red acids, blue bases. Should be easy to remember. Um, so let's talk a little bit about acids. So first of all, acid, acids are acids because they give up hydrogen ions. They're giving them away. All right, they're like Oprah. They're like, you get a hydrogen ion and you get a hydrogen ion, right? They're giving them away, sometimes forcefully. So they have a pH below 7. Examples like lemon juice is a pH of 2. Now keep in mind the scale is not, uh, uh, the pH scale is not scalar, it's actually logarithmic. So the further you get away from neutral, the, 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 it grows exponentially. So uh, 2 is pretty acidic, but like uh, 1 is, it, it is like 1,000 or 10,000 times stronger. I mean, it's, it's just a lot. Uh, it is logarithmic scale. So acids range from weak to strong. Gastric acid, like hydrogen uh, chloride, is actually, um, excuse me, yeah, hydrochloric acid uh, in your stomach is extremely strong. It's, a, it's, it's got a really low pH. Um, and uh, But there's other things like uh, vinegar, right? Vinegar is also an acid. When you open it up, you can smell it from across the room. Right? It's a good quality of an acid, but it's a weak acid. Right? It's actually pretty weak. Now it's neat. You can actually take a chicken bone, put it in a container, fill the container up with vinegar, and the vinegar, the acid, will dissolve the calcium in the bone. And so after about two days, go back, pick up the chicken bone, and it's rubbery. It's the weirdest thing, but it, it, it's an acid, and acids usually dissolve calcium. So other things that are acidic, like Coke, lemons, um, you know, bottles of poison are probably acidic. Who, who knows? Um, and uh, and so acids, yeah. Remember, they give up hydrogen ions. So the, if acids give up hydrogen ions, then bases, also called alkalines, are going to take in or accept hydrogen ions from water. Okay, So they're going to take hydrogen ions, sometimes forcefully. And they have a pH above 7. Um, examples are most of your cleaning supplies. Anything that feels slick to the touch is usually a, uh, is usually a base. So de uh, shampoos, deodorants, um, uh, soaps, detergents, all of that feels slippery and that's a good indicator that it's a base. Um, milk of magnesia, Tums, this is all stuff you take to counteract stomach acid so therefore is it a base. One has magnesium hydroxide in it which is milk of magnesia, it's disgusting stuff, I don't like it. Um, Tums, which I'm very, uh, very I, I do like this a little bit better, I got a pretty strong stomach, very rarely have to take this stuff, um, but this has got a lot of calcium in it and calcium is actually a base and um, so it actually helps neutralize stomach acid. So just remember, if you're a 10, well, maybe on the pH scale because you basic. Right, right. All right. So burning fossil fuels. Whenever we burn fossil fuels, we release, release things like uh, uh, sulfur and nitrogen-based compounds into the air. And that mixes with the moisture in the air because, remember, water is sticky. It will cohesively stick to all these other things, and that changes the pH of the rainwater from more neutral to more acidic. Now, in New York, some of the statues started to get eroded away over a, a, a pretty long period of time, but they're getting eroded away pretty quickly, and the people in town were like, what's going on? And they did a big study and found out that it's actually acid rain. In Pittsburgh and, and, and Philadelphia and areas like that in Pennsylvania, um, there are lots of smokestacks and industry steel operations, and they use coal to keep the furnaces burning to melt the, to melt the metals. All that comes out into the air and blows straight over into New York, and so the city was just getting dissolved. And, and eaten away by um, this uh, corrosive acidic rain. But also, um, acid rains affects living things, right? Because it doesn't just rain in cities, it rains in upstate New York too, where all the pretty forest is. Uh, so soil, the lakes, the streams, other living organisms, they are all affected by this. So look at this forest, what happened to it? Well, over time, acid rain starts killing and eating away the things that are living there, right? And it builds up in ponds, and starts killing the fish, it just changes the pH. It doesn't have to change it a whole lot, but it changes the pH. Because remember, the scale is logarithmic. 
So just a little change is a, is a huge jump in the actual concentration of, of, of hydrogen ions, whether or not it's giving or accepting. And it started causing a lot of havoc, and people upstate New York were, were, and in New York were just getting furious and like, what's going on? So they did a big study, found that it's acid rain, and now we have EPA guidelines that help us uh, um, uh, put scrubbers on, on the top of these industries and dispose of the waste products more properly rather than just dumping it freely into the air. Um, hopefully our current administration will not take that away from us. Um, otherwise, we'll start seeing more problems like this uh, occur. There's a reason why those things are in place, guys. Um, and it's usually for the best. Well, it's always for the best when it comes to those EPA things. We, 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 we tend to underestimate the effect that we have on the world around us. Yes, things are vibrant and bouncing back, but there's like, you know, 8 billion people on the planet. So things don't bounce back like they could. And we, we tend to give a lot more than, or to, we tend to take a lot more than we give. Um, but I'll jump off that high horse. So there is a quick little video I want you to watch. Uh, same thing, if you go in acids and bases, it's in the modules, it's linked, and it talks about um, uh, um, it talks about acids and bases, actually, and about them being uh, um, uh, accepting withdrawing um, uh, hydrogens and electrons from their surroundings, kind of like an ATM. Uh, it does a good little analogy of how they put together. One of your quizzes is actually based on it, so you've been doing the quizzes, you've probably already watched the video, uh, but it's linked there. So make sure you take some time and you go through and start uh, and, and, and do that video, do all the quizzes. Um, keep in mind that um, uh, everything in our world is acids and bases. Everything's got a pH to it. Maybe neutral, but it could be something acidic. It could be something bases. Well, I hope this helps. I understand a little bit more about water, acids and bases, and hydrogen bonds. And I look forward to talking to you guys soon. And I hope you have a good night.